What's up guys, my name is Chris and today I'd like to talk to you about the idea of nasal probiotics. Now this is an entirely new frontier that I don't think many people have explored, save a few researchers. But if you're someone like me that suffered from chronic sinusitis, <clears throat> repeated sinus infections, allergies, seasonal allergies, those kind of things, this might be incredibly beneficial for you to keep track of the developments in this field and it's going to be developing very soon. Here's the thing, I hadn't had a sinus infection in almost two years after I'd started pulsating sinus irrigation and <clears throat> working on my gut and other things like that. Just this past weekend, perhaps you can hear it in my voice, I got a cold which unfortunately morphed into a sinus infection. Now I thought to myself that even though I've worked on all these things, there's still something that makes my sinuses very vulnerable. And you hear so many people talk about gut health and, and how probiotics are such a good way to rebuild the gut and there's all these different things that I've done in my other videos that you can check out that you can do to improve your gut health. But it seemed like no matter how many probiotics I took, no matter how many good organisms that I was incorporating into my, my microbiome, whether it was through fermented foods or it was from probiotic pills, it didn't matter, it never really seemed to affect my sinuses that much. I needed something that was a little more direct of an approach. So I googled nasal probiotic and I got some interesting things. You know, I, I spent some time on the computer and I researched a couple different, there, there, <laughs> there are some studies that have been done in the last few years where they're looking at the microbiome of the sinuses and how that's different than the microbiome of the gut. Now obviously there's still a lot of unknowns because this is, a, like I said, it's a whole new frontier. But they have found that there are some big differences in people who have healthy sinuses and those that are having either chronic sinusitis or chronic rhinositis, chronic rhinosinitis. And, and those differences are a shift in the microbiome. So, Things that normally help to fight off pathology aren't present in people with chronic sinusitis and that could be why that we are more present to and more prone to these type of infections. One of the biggest one that you're going to start hearing a lot about is called lactobacillus sacchi. Now forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but <laughs> I haven't been able to find anybody that knows how to pronounce it. So lactobacillus sacchi is used also actually in meat processing to help to help prevent listeria in various meats. So we know too now that this is prevalent in people with healthy sinuses and whereas people that do not have healthy sinuses it's not as present. And what can we do about that? That's where I started to stumble across a website called lactobacto.com and this is owned by a Dr. Silgalis. She has a PhD in developmental psychology and her entire family became sick with became sick with chronic sinusitis after mold poisoning that was going on throughout her house it was never really addressed so after this they discovered this it was too late they had already all four of her family had developed chronic sinusitis it was getting bad for her and she had to be able to find a way to not, she didn't want to go through surgeries and she didn't want to go through all these other things. So she got desperate and she started to say, what can I do besides things like surgery in order to make my sinus health better so we don't keep getting these repeated sinus infections that need several rounds of antibiotics sometimes and still don't go away and then we bomb the gut and, and we're further weakening our immune system. It's a really unfortunate approach and it's frustrating for people like myself that have dealt with this over and over. You can probably hear some of the frustration in my voice but the thing is is that that you can find ways to strengthen the immune system and, and that's what she found recently out of a desperate attempt to feel better. She took some of this research from Susan Lynch who works, she's a professor at the University of California, San Francisco. She works in, she's an associate professor in the Department of Gastroenterology and her interest is in the gut, in the gut airway axis. Perhaps you've heard of the gut-brain axis and that's the relationship of the microbiome, the microorganisms in the, in the relation from the gut into the mind and how the two can affect each other, mostly used from a clinical perspective. If you're interested in learning more about that, Harvard's done a lot. And if you just type in gut-brain axis, you'll find all kinds of things. 
Now there's a lot of research speculation that, again, this is a new frontier, but that the microbiome extends up into the sinuses in a way that can have a huge impact in our immunity. What she found in her research, again, is that this lactobacillus sacchi is more present and that balance has to be there. So Dr. Segalis on Lactobacto found this research and she took that and she said, how can I get more of this lactobacillus sacchi into my, into my sinuses so I can have a better chance at having a healthy microbiome? What she found out was that it's most prevalent in kimchi of all things, which going back to the gut and fermented foods, those things, she decided to swab the inside of her nostrils with kimchi juice. And it was a miraculous recovery for her. Now you know that I wouldn't necessarily recommend going about and doing this type of self-experimentation, but I would have put it past myself to do something like that. Because the idea, this, the concept is sound. Of course she used a, a vegan type of kimchi, and it, it, but she had a miraculous recovery. And now if you go on her website, you'll see all of these different types of similar stories. And I think that's fascinating. I think that's fascinating that, that people can think outside the box and get these kind of results without having to go through these invasive procedures. And maybe there are ways that we can do this that maybe is a little more refined. And she outlined some of those on there. As I said before, this type of bacteria is used in meat processing. So being used in meat processing, you can actually get it as an isolated culture from certain companies that I'll put in, in the description below, but of course this is at your own risk. My point is this, there are nasal sprays that are being developed, there are products and probiotics that will be developed as we start to understand the microbiome more. I'm not saying you should go ahead and stick kimchi juice up your nose, but it's an interesting, it raises an interesting discussion in a whole new area that we've never thought of before. Imagine if we could prevent so many different types of respiratory diseases, maybe extending even into things like preventing infections from cystic fibrosis. I mean, that kind of stuff would be amazing. It would, re it would reduce the cost, the medical cost, so much. The applications of probiotics are expanding at an exponential rate as we begin to classify what the human microbiome is in, in a regional type perspective. So things like I did recently a video on reducing kidney stone risk just by a unknown organism called Oxalobacter formingis. So there's all these clinical applications that could be coming out in the future. And I highly encourage you to check these kind of things out and to keep your eye out for them. I hope this information is helpful, guys. You can certainly check out some of the resources we talked about, like lactobacto.com. Check out Susan Lynch. Read a little bit about the lactobacillus sacchi and see if that's something that you want to invest in or, or look further into. These are the kind of posts that I do. I post every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Mind, Body, Spirit. My mission is to help people to thrive despite any health circumstance. And I'm always going to do that from a lifestyle perspective. So if you haven't subscribed yet and you found this helpful, go ahead and subscribe and follow if you're on Facebook. And I hope to see you soon. Thanks a lot for stopping by, guys.